An electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, is a phenomenon that cripples electronic systems by inducing an overwhelming electric current. It was discovered during the nuclear testing of the 1950s. Hydrogen bombs detonated in the Pacific interfered with communication in Australia and short-circuited street lights in Hawaii, more than 800 miles away. It was determined that nuclear explosions generated electromagnetic pulses, which could influence technology far outside the blast radius. But how exactly does an EMP work, and how do nuclear bombs cause them? The devastating power of an EMP hinges on the same principles as a common radio, just applied on a much larger scale. Faraday's law of induction states that the movement of electrons, known as current, generates a magnetic field. Fluctuations in this magnetic field induce currents in nearby conductors. A radio uses rapidly changing electric currents modulated by either the frequency or the amplitude to encode information. The transmitter generates this modulated current and releases a magnetic field to excite electrons in the receiver. Any excess frequencies can be tuned out, and the desired signal can be played by a speaker. Generally, radios only use low-intensity signals that require antennas to be picked up. An EMP, however, employs a huge electric current to generate a much more powerful magnetic field. This field induces similarly large electric currents within virtually any conductive material from the blast zone, far greater than conventional electronic devices are designed to withstand. This causes short circuits that can explode transformers, burn out semiconductors, and melt wiring. Additionally, these conductive materials would all serve as antennas for the powerful magnetic field, amplifying the effect over many miles. Nuclear bombs generate electromagnetic pulses via the Compton effect. Photons of gamma radiation can knock loose electrons from atoms of low atomic numbers. After the electron is freed from the nucleus of oxygen or nitrogen in the Earth's atmosphere, it interacts with the Earth's magnetic field to create a fluctuating electric current. This, in turn, generates the propagating magnetic field, which spells doom to vulnerable devices. Despite its potent circuit-destroying capabilities, the EMP is not omnipotent. A Faraday cage can be placed around technology to negate the effect of EMP attack. This cage is an enclosure of neutrally charged conductive material that offers the incoming charge an easy path to ground. Electricity, like water, will always take the path of least resistance, so the pulse will never reach the vulnerable wiring inside. Additionally, circuits can be designed tougher to operate under higher voltage and current loads, meaning the EMP spike remains within functional parameters. Analog technology is immune to EMP. This record player, for example, creates music by running a needle through a series of grooves. The resulting vibrations run up the arm and into the cartridge, agitating a magnet held between two wire coils. According to Faraday's law, this creates a flux, which generates currents that can be transduced into sound. Nowhere in this technology are semiconductors, logic gates, or other easily overloaded elements of a digital circuit. It will continue playing as soon as the EMP passes by. Finally, the EMP poses no direct threat to organic tissue, just conductive metals. Humans will survive the wave even if directly exposed. This is one of the draws of developing EMP weaponry, as a target's ability to communicate can be sent back to the Stone Ages without permanent loss of life. EMP weaponry remains unofficial, but the planet's most powerful militaries likely possess them. It's highly unlikely that anyone in the United States would ever experience a weaponized EMP, but if you do as part of a nuclear blast, experts assure that the EMP is the least of your worries. A low-yield 10 kiloton nuclear bomb creates an EMP between 2 and 5 miles from the impact point. This is the same distance as the shockwave, whose sheer kinetic force would outweigh any adverse effects from the pulse. Thank you for tuning in.